Uh, uh, come on. No, no, no. Just, uh, uh. Oh. Yeah, this is about what I think of the power glove. You'll have to forgive my voice. I have a little bit of a cold going on right now. But this is the original Nintendo Power Glove working on PC. This is not modified in any way at all, and I just have it connected. Today I'm gonna go through and show you how I did this, why you're able to do this, and how you could get this working on any computer, and I'm talking like any computer. This is a Windows 98 system, but what I'm gonna show you today would work on anything all the way up to Windows 10. It would just depend on how you want to set this up. But it's actually very easy to get one of these working because of how Nintendo controllers are designed. First, I want to start out with the controller that originally shipped with the Nintendo. This is one of the most iconic video game controllers of all time, alongside the Atari CX-10 and CX-40 for the Atari 2600. Part of that is because of its front-facing buttons that is now ubiquitous on most game controllers. Other game controllers weren't always as easy to understand right up front. Now one of the other things that's notable about the original Nintendo controller is the fact that it has fewer pins than it does buttons. This is because inside of the Nintendo controller it uses a shift register. The shift register that they used was an off-the-shelf part though, which meant that the controller itself wasn't all that electrically unique. Unlike modern game controllers that have security protocols and identification over USB, the original NES controller is a very simple electronic device. What this meant is that many companies would take the original Nintendo controllers apart, see how they were made, and produce their own controllers, leading to some very wild designs, and have kind of found myself building up a collection of them because there are so many and they can be so weird. Like this one that I can only imagine was designed exclusively for Marble Madness. Now some of these would actually be second party controllers because Nintendo would share an intent for how they want a controller designed and a third party company would manufacture it. But Nintendo did make their own additional first party controllers, most notably the Zapper. Now, the Zapper is also a bit of a unique case when it comes to Nintendo controllers because they don't use the standard pinout like the regular controllers do. They use extra data pins on here just for the trigger and detect information. This is necessary since it has to read the flashes off of the display. Note that there isn't anything actually in these that's reliant on how a CRT works. These could work on an LCD. It's actually all about the processing delays. So. This is just a little fact. Now let's get to the power glove, which you set up as two parts. First, the sensors that go on the TV that also have the cable and box that you plug into the NES, and then the glove itself, which uses a nine pin D-sub connector, and that's it. You're set up and ready to go, almost. Now, just turning on the console and plugging in the power glove isn't everything that you want to do. Let me go ahead and press start here to get into the game, and you'll see exactly what I mean. So, if we begin this, we can see moving left makes it go left, moving right makes it go right, and if I bring down one of the fingers, uh, I guess that one, now the car is moving in Rad Racer. But this isn't the ideal controller configuration. The uh, power glove is actually designed to have different modes programmed into it. So Rad Racer is designed for mode nine. And now if I do this, I'll bring down one of the fingers. I forget exactly which one it is, but rotating the glove is what will actually cause the car to turn. Now there are other program modes such as 14, which will allow you to just use the controller as a game pad if the uh, thing was wanting to cooperate here. such is the life of a power glove owner. But this is how the power glove works. It has all of these different modes and there are multiple modes that are designed for one game in particular and are almost entirely useless outside of that game's context. Now, let me go over what different control options there are for the power glove. Okay, so I want you to pay attention to this thing with the blinking lights up here, because this actually tells you all of the buttons that are being pressed, which is very helpful to get that kind of feedback. Now. This mode is program mode one, which is up is the up arrow on the D-pad, 
down is the down arrow on the D-pad. Left is left, right is right. Squeezing the index finger is A and squeezing the thumb is B. Now this has more controls. You can squeeze these three fingers and that is a C type command, but no games actually really use that. There are different program modes where that can do things. But since this is Rad Eraser, let me put this into program mode nine again, and I'm going to unpause this and I'm going to recenter here first. Now I can go ahead and just hold A down with my finger, but if I rotate, you can see that I can actually steer as if I'm holding a steering wheel and then crash. And that is another form of control it has is the rotation. The power glove can also detect yaw and pitch and direction as well. So if I push this forward or back, uh, that does something different. Forward holds the up arrow and back holds B for break. So yeah, this thing can be really complicated. It's a cool idea, but there are so many problems with it. Like my arm is I'm really fatigued already and I've barely been holding it up. You have to hold your arm out so far in front of you to really use it that it's just unpleasant. Now, despite how unusual it is and all of its quirks, it's still just a normal NES controller. It sends the four D-pad direction buttons, select, start, and A and B. It doesn't have any other special communications that it has to do with the NES, which means that you can use it in any scenario where you can use a regular NES controller. Which brings us back to getting it working with a PC. Now, the first step in this process is very easy. You just move the sensor units onto the monitor, no problems. But of course, that's not the hard part. The hard part is plugging this into a computer and making it do something. But we kind of live in the future and things like this exist now. A USB adapter for an NES controller. Now, this next part is where I just become impressed mostly with Microsoft, but kind of the industry in general. Before I plug this in, let me show you something else. I'm gonna use a DualShock 4 on Windows 98. So all I'm gonna do here is just plug in the controller and let it run the driver setup wizard. Once that's done, we can go to the game controllers tab and see a fully functional DualShock 4 on Windows 98. No special drivers, no hacky workarounds or anything like that. The reason this works is because this is a direct input device, not an X input device, like say a modern Xbox controller. This is still fully backwards compatible with the original versions of DirectX and how they would handle game controllers, especially over USB. So this controller is just identifying what input features it has and making it work with this operating system. This is really cool. And with an adapter that turns an NES controller into a standard direct input device, we can make the power glove work with Windows 98 or all the way up to Windows 10 because this is still supported today. Now, just so you can actually see what this cable is, let me go ahead and remove this. I paid like 15 bucks for this on Amazon. Seems a little overpriced to me, but hey, it works and that's it. It's just, there's a blob, probably a chip in here, and then it goes off to the cable and that's all there is. So I'm gonna plug in my power glove and then I'm going to plug this into the back of my computer underneath my desk. Now that this is plugged in, I have it set to the gamepad mode, but we can see that it is fully functional as a game controller in Windows 98. Now, when we have it connected like this, we can see some more things. So first off, if I put this into full on power glove mode here, uh, it starts off in rapid fire mode. I have to turn that off, which is really annoying. Uh, but now if I push the buttons, okay, they're turned off. Now from here, if I move up, it goes up. If I move down, it goes down, left, it goes left, right, it goes right. And while it's showing up as analog axes, it's not an analog device. It only ever sends digital directions because the D-pad on the NES was digital. It can't send an analog signal. Now it could have possibly pulsed the analog, um, well, pulsed and analog signal as a PWM, but 
eh, you're going to get mixed uh, outcomes with that. And really just using it as digital and trying to do your own stuff is going to be a bit better. But we can see here that this works. I'm now going to strap this on and I kind of have to sit really far away because it's a, a, a working range that the power glove is in. That's really not desk friendly, but you'll get to see me using it at least. All right, now the first thing I want to give a crack at here is Monster Truck Madness 2 with the Power Glove, and I'm going to use it in Rad Racer mode and see how well that's going to work. But there's one thing I want to reiterate here as this is installing about the controls. Now, as I showed you, this works as an NES gamepad, and that means that you can't use these buttons here for anything. So despite having this connected to a computer, this is still just a joystick. You can't use any of these inputs to do anything unique on the computer, it's still limited to just being a gamepad. So you have to keep that in mind and temper your expectations. You're not going to suddenly unlock massive potential in the power glove just because you have it connected to a computer. All right, since I'm now in the menu, I'm going to go ahead and try and set this up. I'm going to do it, uh, let's do it as a gamepad and we're gonna have to customize our inputs. Now I'm gonna set this to the D-pad mode because this is going to be a lot more reliable for sending the commands how you want to do this. So uh, we have the D-pads just gonna show up as axes and there's not a whole lot we can do about that in a lot of games, but we could potentially do some other stuff here. So A is button one, B is button two, and then I think select is three and start is four. Um, yeah, I think that's right. So we can go ahead and do this. So button one, I want to be accelerate. Button two, I want to be brake. And I think after that, I'm probably good. Uh, null zone really doesn't matter because it doesn't have <laughs> a dead zone, which really sucks, by the way. As you'll see, lacking a dead zone is terrible. But uh, we'll go ahead and continue. So because this is going to be the Rad Racer controls, uh, B will actually be this, and A will be index. But that doesn't really matter. Uh, just keep in mind that it's the NES controls that you bind and then you're able to set the mode to change what the inputs on the glove actually do to send those NES controls. So with that, I think we should be good. Let's go ahead and try this out. All right, setting this to Rad Racer mode and centering. All right, there we go. Oh no, it's bound to camera. Why? I think I have extra buttons bound to camera. Oh, that's 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 wonderful. I can turn left easily enough. Uh, I think I need to go change some more settings here. So can I do this in game? Oh, good. Okay, button three, none. Just in case, I'm gonna set all of these to none. Right? Nope. Left. Accelerate. Oh man, that is brutal. It is turning right, but the problem is, is it's also sending a camera command somehow. So there is one problem with this, um, and you might be able to see that the buttons don't actually show you what you're doing, and I'm not quite sure why that is when you're using it on PC. It shows them on the original Nintendo, but not here. God, this is awful. I really need to sit farther back. This is, this is really, really bad. <laughs> Left turn works, so at least there's that. Oh, I think we've looped the map now. Yep. Right turn kind of works, it's just that you're looking out your left window when you're doing it for some weird reason. This is still kind of fun, but... The best way to play this game is going to be with an actual racing wheel and pedal setup, not a power glove. So I think maybe we should try something else. Now before I go ahead and pick a different game, I need to show you one of my all-time favorite programs I've ever used, Glove Pie. Now Glove Pie is a scripting engine specifically for input devices. Now, what's funny is this whole video is actually kind of inspired by LGR's review of the reality uh, no, the Essential Reality P5 Glove, which is what this program was actually made for. That's why it's called Glove Pi. It was designed to allow you to read the input data from the Reality, the Essential Reality P5 and map it to, say, a keyboard. Now, what I've done 
is I've used this to read the data from the power glove and have it act as a mouse. So let me go over how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and I'm going to set the power glove to the gamepad mode. Now here we have some variables and if I push up on the D-pad, we can see that the cursor moves up and down, left or right does stuff and clicks do things too, but that you can't really see that here. Now what's critical is as I talked about, the power glove is a digital input device. It doesn't do analog, which is very needed for mouse movement. So what I've done is I've used an acceleration profile so that when you start moving the mouse cursor, it's slow. So you can try and do more precise input movements. Now I've also designed this in such a way that you can hold select and change the acceleration factor so that you can get faster movements if you want right off the bat or even slower ones if you really want. And then I've also set it so that you can configure the maximum speed you can reach. So if you really want to whiz around, you can, uh, even though that's really not all that useful. If you were using the script on a newer computer that has a higher resolution display, that might be useful because this glove pie script will actually work on Windows 10. At least it should. I haven't tested it. So that might be useful. And I will go ahead and link this to a GitHub gist file so you can download this if you want to see it. Um, but there's, you can configure the two main things. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this at a max speed of three. And this is pixels, actually, uh, three pixels per tick per clock cycle of glove pie. I'm not actually sure how fast this runs. It might just be as fast as a computer can go, but I'm not sure. Uh, and I'll leave my acceleration at, uh, point 0.1, I think is what I like. Let me test this in actual mouse mode here. I think that's pretty good. Now, I have this resolution set kind of low right now. Actually, that acceleration is a tad high. I'm going to turn that down. There we go. That's much better. But yeah, you can see this totally works as a mouse input device with this, which really opens up some doors. Now, of course, the first game I thought would be fun to try, Dungeon Keeper 2, because you play as a hand in the game, doesn't work. Uh, the inputs are completely ignored, despite them actually being configured correctly. So, yeah, uh, it must directly try and read the mouse data rather than, oh, wow, that is running terribly, rather than use the uh, operating system calls that Glove Pie would normally work with. So this game is not the best candidate. Now, here's a program that this should work with because SimCity 2000 is practically an office application based on how it's developed. So we'll go ahead and start out as easy as we can here and get going. I think I need to change my acceleration to touch. Oh man, Chicago's getting ruined. All right, oh, the first challenge is closing the newspapers. Oh, get over. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Oh, there, I had to crank my sensitivity way down. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> that was the max speed that finally worked. Oh boy, this is gonna be a long game. Let's move this off to the side here. Oh, bump of the microphone. Oh, geez, I gotta get farther back. All right, I'm gonna crank up my speed a bit here. Nope, centered bad. Ugh. Need that zoom tool. Ugh, there we go. Let's go ahead and pick our spot of land. Max speed up. Oh, my arm's so tired already. <laughs> Good enough, I'll take it. All right, roads. Oh, this is gonna be a mess. Ugh. Come on. Can the camera move with it? Oh, of course not. Hopefully that was a line. There might be better ways to uh, write the acceleration profile, but uh, <laughs> this was about the best I could do in a short period of time. 
make this worthwhile. Oh, that was a perfect line. Okay, let's zone some residential. Perfect. All right, getting close. We'll be four blocks away from the road. Nope. That was three. Uh, uh. Oh, come on. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Need some power. Ugh. Suddenly this has a huge dead zone. I've never had it had this have this much of a dead zone. Oh, I need to change the device type here. Uh, God, it's so bad. Go! No, I don't want a disaster. No. <laughs> Ugh. I'm holding. There we go. Oh, this is going to be a nightmare. Uh, 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 uh. Come on. Oh, yes. All right, I'm going oil. I don't want to have to do this again anytime soon. All right. Let's put this right there. Yeah! Success! Now I gotta switch back to power lines. Get it across the road. Just down. Oh, not a power plant again. Oh, I just for a frame of reference here, it's not that the script is terrible. Um, I could actually increase the acceleration here now. Because if I do this manually, it's really not that bad. And then I could just come over here and put the lines where I want. Diagonals just aren't going to be handled well. But see, it's not not the program. It's just that it sucks as a D-pad. But, oh, man. I built a power plant and I added residential. I'm, I'm calling that as much as a success as I care to in this game. Solitaire is much, much more the speed of this setup fine movements aren't that great and honestly it doesn't have any reason for fine movements to be that great because it was designed for an nes it's not like you're meant to use this to control a computer it's terrible for it so i'd say that it's doing pretty good at what it's doing considering you know what it was designed for because this is pretty cool nonetheless i wish monster truck madness had worked a little bit better because that would have been nice um, and it should it really should have worked. I'm not sure. It was like it was sending multiple commands at once, and I don't know. I mean, actually, one, we can look at that. Let's go ahead and look at that. So I'm going to, let's see, program, rad racer, okay. Button A is being held down um, because of the trigger. Okay, center, forward, good, turn. Oh, is it, it was pushing something. It's pushing two repeatedly. Why? Who is B is brake, and it's only supposed to do that when you pull it back. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just not that great. All right, well, I think that pretty much sums up the experience of using the power glove to control a computer, and just, <laughs> it doesn't make it any better than using it on an NES. It's still absolutely terrible, but cool, because, I mean, it's a power glove. Now, um, while this is the precursor to motion controls, some things to note that uh, about this as well. Uh, this does not have a gyroscopic sensor in it. Um, these are not infrared. It's all ultrasonic. Matter of fact, if you hold this up to your ear, you can hear it. So it's it's a uh, it's pretty simple technology. I'm surprised these are as reliable as they are <laughs> to call it reliable, but it works. A lot of weird things like this don't work this late into their life cycle. I, I'm kind of impressed by that. I'm not impressed by using it on a computer. I'm glad I tried it because it was fun to just get the experience, but I, I no means recommend it. So unless you already have one of these just sitting around, you're much better off trying to track down something like a Reality P5 if you want to have the glove experience on a computer. But that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this, you can support the channel on Patreon. I have more videos like this planned in the future, experimenting with weird stuff. But for now, that's it. I'll see you next time.